What's up YouTube? I'm Brad from Rancher Us. As always guys, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave that comment down below. We're on the road to 1000 we hope you guys can help us get there. Alright, so this is going to be our Mortal Kombat movie review here on Rancher Us. Overall, what did I think? Uh, it kind of went as I expected it to go. Um, I actually enjoyed the uh, Mortal Kombat movies in the 1990s. Uh, not because they were great movies, and not because I'm even a huge fan of Mortal Kombat, but simply because they're entertaining to watch. I thought the fight sequences were pretty amazing for that time. Um, it's a fun popcorn movie to watch. Like, yeah, there's some acting in those 1990s movies that is just so beyond belief at how bad they actually are, but that's, that's cool, you know, you know, a lot of the movies that I watch, you know, from my nostalgia days, I rewatch not because, like I said, they're great movies, but because, look, they're, they're fun for the time that you're watching them in for the nostalgia kick. Uh, beyond that, they don't really, they don't really get anywhere it's with me. Um, but I will say this, if this movie would have continued, um, like the first 10 or 15 minutes of it uh, started it off, um, it would have been miles above anything uh, game-wise or movie-wise of Mortal Kombat. In fact, we would probably be looking at trilogies, uh, you know, countless Mortal Kombat movies, if it would have continued that route. Um, unfortunately, it did not. Um had some really bad pacing in some in some parts of it, some really bad acting, some really one dimensional characters. Um, but um, the first ten or fifteen minutes of it, the uh, Hanzo Beyond fight uh, was uh, was superb. Like like Hanzo um, taking down those ninjas was awesome. I loved every minute of it. It really uh, drew me into the movie. Uh, it was just, I mean, the choreography was just great. The fatalities was amazing to see on screen. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed those first 10 or 15 minutes. After, uh, 15 minutes. Um, the one thing, though, that I will say, as much as I enjoyed it... Um, kind of didn't really understand the whole uh Bihan um Hanzo rivalry they never really explained it I kept waiting for them to at least give us some clue um as to why Bihan was after him in the first place um uh, you know you know of course you know the rival clans and so forth but he's speaking Bihan speaking Chinese and um uh, you know, of course, Hanzo is speaking uh, Japanese, so I really didn't uh, understand the correlation between the two clans. They never explained that. Uh, so, if there was one thing that was disappointing, it was definitely that uh, this could this movie could have used um, a little bit of backstory. A little bit of backstory would have gone a long ways. And it really didn't even have to be that much. Just give us like little hints here and there of, okay, this is the reason why they're fighting. This is their rivalry. Uh, this is blah, 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 whatever. You know, just something. It could have even been just a few sentences long and that would have been fine. Could have been less than a paragraph. Uh, and it would have been fine. But their motivations just weren't uh, clear. And so it kind of made... Their rivalry uh, and even their fight scene um, a little less exciting. I, w I will go so far as to say. Um, overall, I will say this though: the show, I mean, I mean, the movie in general um, has a really terrible pacing problem. All the way from, I mean, after those first ten or fifteen minutes, which were. Just flawless, I thought. Uh, I really don't have anything bad to say other than I wish they would have given us more context um, between between the two men. Um, but, but, I mean, the first 10 or 15 minutes, the pacing was 
superb. After that, it's just like it fell apart. It's like the movie was very rushed. Um, it didn't uh, take time with the characters uh, that it really needed to. I mean, I mean, this movie had some interesting characters involved, some interesting storylines uh, involved, and unfortunately, it never got around to telling anybody's story to the extent that it needed to for these characters to mean anything to us. Some of these characters, they come and gone, and we didn't get to know them very well, and we didn't really uh, care about their characters very well uh, because of that. So that's a disappointment on that. As far as Kano is concerned, though, uh, most of the characters on here were pretty one-dimensional. Uh, Kano stole the show. Like, he was by far my favorite character uh, from this movie. Uh, and normally, I find him in the video games and even in the uh, the previous uh, movies. Um, I found him kind of boring. Uh, you know, he's just this typical guy that really doesn't... Um, doesn't really have any motivation except greed. Um, he's not even that funny in a lot of those uh, earlier movies or even in the games. So there's really nothing that really draws me to him. But I can't say that for this one. This one actually reminds me of... Um, he actually kind of reminds me of Captain Boomerang from Suicide Squad. Um, he He just has that same cynical way about him uh he says some really funny things um he's just a really charismatic character a character that i really enjoyed through the first half of the movie um i mean it was just i thought he was just amazing i really did i thought he was the actor that played him i thought just did a superb job um i just wish all the characters were that way and unfortunately it didn't really um, pan out that way for, I would say, 90% of the characters on screen. Even though we got to see a lot, of, we didn't really get to see a lot of who they were and why we should care about them. Um, but as far as the kano Sonya Blade rivalry, um, that's something in the video games and, you know, even in the movies... Um, the previous movies of the 1990s, you know, they really play it up. So, like, when the two fight, you um, you really feel the, the heated confrontation, the hatred between the two, uh, the two individuals. And, sadly, this movie really didn't um, give us any reason to care about their rivalry. Um, in fact... I was, you know, I was trying to think back on why there was even any rivalry at all. Like, why did the two even need to fight? Like, I mean, uh, maybe you could say betrayal. Maybe you could say uh, he was trying to get back at her for an earlier uh, fight. Um, I don't know, but that even kind of seemed like more of a playful fight uh, or in the in the film. Um, but it didn't feel warranted is what I'm trying to say. It felt um, it felt like these were just basically two characters that were just chosen because of their past history in video games um, and, and in the movies to, to fight, uh, fight each other. That's the way it felt. There's nothing specifically in the movie that made us... Um, think that there was a real rivalry between the two. It, there was just nothing there uh, to it. Um, but I mean, you know, besides Kano, like I was saying, besides Kano, there just was not standout characters in this. I mean, there was a lot of interesting characters, characters that could have been um, pretty amazing if they were given their own story. Um, but unfortunately, it's just because of the bad pacing issues, um, they were unable to, uh, they were unable to really bring out the most in any of those characters. Plus, I will say this, 
it's great to have a star-studded cast. It's great to bring out a lot of the uh, characters that we know and love. Um, but at the same time, uh, too many sometimes can be the downfall of, of a movie or a TV series. Especially when you don't have very much time for introductions. I felt like um, Mortal Kombat suffered from this greatly. Uh, we got to see too many of the main characters that we wanted to see. And um, unfortunately, none of them was given the right amount of screen time uh, for us to, to care at all. I would even go so far as to say the villains got the worst uh, part of this. Because you take even Goro, um, you know, some of these other ones that was on there on screen. Um, I didn't get to enjoy them as villains because we knew nothing about them. They appear briefly and then, you know, of course they go off and they fight. Like, that was frustrating to me. It really was because I felt like each one of those villains could have been something interesting. I mean, there was some of them that I was just like, you're just there to die at this point. Like, like you, you have no other meaning, no other reason for being there, no backstory uh, whatsoever. Um, you know, they might throw something here and there into it, but it was just vague references that really didn't go anywhere. Um, but I will say this. Um, I'd say probably the worst one, you know, when we're talking about even one-dimensional characters. Um, one that I felt like the 90s, uh, movies got right where this one got wrong was Raiden. Um, he was boring. Boring, lame, all the way around. Hated the character. Uh, hated the, uh, the, the way the actor portrayed the character. Just really just wasn't a good fit at all. I, I, I mean, you could have left him out of this movie and it would have probably been a better movie. Like, I mean, his scenes were just so flat for me. I just didn't enjoy anything about him. He didn't he didn't uh, act the part to me of, of what Raiden acted. Uh, I just didn't enjoy his character at all. Um, but as far as the fight scenes go when it comes to Mortal Kombat, um, they didn't disappoint. The fight scenes were actually pretty legit. Um, the the finishing moves, uh, the fatalities, I guess you could say, um, were pretty legit. Like I really actually enjoyed uh, every single one of the fatalities on there. They were it was really bloody and uh, definitely deserved an R rating. Let's just put it that way. So yeah, that part actually did not disappoint. Um, and there was, you know, I felt like there was clear payoff when, um, when it come to that, to the fight scenes, I just felt like the motivation behind the fight scenes, um, wasn't there. And, and look, I don't want to give anything away about the movie. Um, but let's just say majority of the fight scenes are done in like a five to 10 minute span in the movie and it was like a montage of fight scenes um from various different characters and it lessened those fight scenes in my opinion because if each one of those fight scenes would have been given its own you know place in the movie uh it would have they would have been epic um but unfortunately uh, it just didn't work out that way. Uh, they did it really quick. It's like, it felt like you know, because of the bad pacing, they wasted a lot of the movie. I would say the first, you know, after the first 10 or 15 minutes that were really good, uh, it was like another 30 minutes. It was just completely and totally wasted. Um, and that time could have been used at, uh, allowing these fight sequences to take place in their own right instead of feeling so rushed. Um, 
the fight scenes, like I said, were amazing. They looked good, but it just wasn't, uh, it was too rushed in that regard. They needed their own place in the movie, and unfortunately, the movie just did not allow for it. So I'm a little disappointed in that. This is probably the, I mean, this by far is the first Mortal Kombat movie that doesn't involve the tournament at all. So if you're looking for the tournament, you're not going to find it in this movie. All of this takes place before it. I guess the sequel to this will actually um, deal with the tournament. But I mean, there's that to me was kind of a little bit stupid. You have a little, you have a Mortal Kombat, but you don't have any tournament. Like, I mean, that... That was a payoff that didn't really seem um, to really fit for me. Uh, I just didn't like that part of it. One per, uh, one villain that I uh, was really uh, anticipating, which I always anticipate. I remember him from the original, um, the original um, uh, movies back in the nineteen nineties. And he's one of my favorite characters from the video games as well as Goro. And, um, man, he just, he was lame in this. Like, uh, even his fight sequence, uh, really didn't do him much for me. He was so cut and dry. He didn't have any, uh, feel to him at all. There was nothing about him that, uh, seemed overwhelming. Um, he just seemed, uh, I mean, he, he was there and gone. Um, so yeah, I felt like that maybe could have been done a little bit better as well. Uh, but again, that kind of goes with all the villains, um, on this, on this movie. Uh, they're just there and then they get maybe a scene or two and then that's it. And it's disappointing. It really is, um, I would say disappointing in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, but as far as all these other characters are concerned, this could have been the Sub-Zero Scorpion movie, and it would have been a great movie. Uh, unfortunately, they had to add all these other characters along with it, um, and I kind of felt like that was kind of not needed. You know what? You could have, uh, since you're not gonna really, since you're not gonna put the tournament in it in the first place, maybe having like you know a Hanzo Bihan uh, movie uh, in itself would have been, I think, pretty good, pretty interesting. Uh, we could have got a lot of backstory. I would have enjoyed it. I mean, if you're not gonna put the tournament in it anyways, you know why not flesh out those two characters a little bit? I thought they were interesting. Um, and, you know, I would have loved to have seen more of their rivalry, uh, throughout, you know, a, a two hour span. Uh, but no, they kind of wanted to just give a little hint to it and, um, and then, uh, you know, have all this other stuff go on around it where I kind of felt like the best scenes by far were, uh, between those two. I mean, their fight sequences were amazing. Um, their, uh, back and forth was pretty legit. I enjoyed it. I felt like, uh, while I wish that they would have given more, um, uh, more criteria to what they were, uh, fighting, uh, for or against, um, I still felt like their dialogue between each other, you felt the hatred between the two men, so... By far, their two their scenes together were pretty were pretty good. I mean, really good. I would go so far as to say I really enjoyed it. Uh, but by far, I mean, this could have been the uh, Sub Zero uh, Scorpion movie, um, and it would have been fine. I, I wish they almost you know after watching the movie, I kind of wish they would have gone that way. It'd been something new. It'd been something different. Uh, I don't think any Mortal Kombat fans would have complained about it. Um, but I mean, that's just my opinion on that one. I thought Joe, uh, uh, Joe Taslam, uh, that played Sub-Zero, I thought he did a really excellent part, um, in this movie. I mean, uh, with and without the mask, like, he's just got, 
uh, that demeanor that goes with somebody that you would expect with Sub Zero. Uh, so I really did enjoy him as well. Um, but like I was saying, this movie where it faltered was um, too many characters and too little time to uh, expound on any of them. Um, there was some interesting parts of this movie. I won't say I was ever truly bored during this movie, but I also wasn't clearly entertained at the same time. It was kind of one of those movies that I, I would maybe watch again if I'm with somebody that hasn't seen it before. But as far as uh, me just wanting to watch this movie or coming across this movie and wanting to watch it again, no, I, I, I definitely would not do that. Um, you know, like I said, um, I enjoy, I enjoyed, it's so weird to say, I enjoyed the characters of this film. I did. Almost every single one of them I enjoyed, but there just wasn't enough of them, uh, for me to care about them. The rivalries I didn't care about, uh, the... Uh, the dialogue between a lot of these characters I didn't care about. Uh, the companionship between these characters I didn't really uh, care about. I just really did not care about it. So I'm like, yeah, it it has some moments um, where I was like, okay, you know what? I'm starting to really like this one. This one is starting to be you know, kind of close to my number one character. But it never got to the point where I was like totally wowed by any of these characters. Uh, as far as this new character Cole is concerned, uh, I thought he did a pretty good job. I've heard a lot of people complain about him. Saying that he really was kind of boring and he really didn't have much to do in the movie. Um, I thought he was interesting. Though there was this one moment. and it Well, I mean, it wasn't just one moment. It was kind of... This whole sequence where they're gaining their powers. Uh, and I couldn't help but think what that reminded me of. It reminded me of that new Power Rangers movie that came out a few years ago. And, um, you know, about how they're able to get their powers. There was that moment here in Mortal Kombat that it just felt so much like that. Uh, that it kind of ruined it for me a little bit. Um, and Cole's ability of get uh, how he got his powers was so like how the rangers got their powers in power rangers movie uh the the one that come out just a few years ago i mean it just felt that way but overall as far as the violence is concerned uh the violence was pretty good pretty good i enjoyed it it was brutal definitely deserved an r rating so that was not something that um that was you know anything i could fault them about I, I feel like it lived up to the billing um i felt like that sub-zero uh scorpion fight at the very end that we all were anticipating that were in the previews actually uh lived up to its billing uh it was really fun fight to watch it was really one of the only fights that we really got to see from beginning to end that felt like we got um, the good bits uh, about it. Uh, you know, the whole back and forth between the characters. Uh, you know, one getting the upper hand and then the other one getting the upper hand. So I actually really, uh, that part was really good. Um, I will say this, though. Um, my final thoughts on it would be... Um, the story mode from the newer Mortal Kombat games is actually better than this movie. Um, simply because they flesh out the characters. They have a long list of characters that they uh, deal with during, um, during those stories. And I feel like in the games they do its service. Um, but in this movie they did not. Just way too many characters that could have really, you know, you take Goro for instance, um, that could have been, um, you know, just a few of them could have been, um, 
brought on a little bit later. It didn't have to be right now. Um, you didn't have to, you know, put all these different characters in this one movie, and there was just no point. I mean, it was just, it was, it made a lot of the movie kind of filler for me a little bit, because it was a lot of interesting characters, but none that I really cared about. Um, but I will say this, though, uh, the movie is less interesting than uh, the story mode on the new Mortal Kombat movies, uh, by far. I'd say by far. Um, those those newer stories, um, uh, storylines in those new games are pretty amazing. And uh, they do those games service where, unfortunately, the movie does not. Um, overall, since I wasn't really ever bored, but like I said, I wasn't really ever entertained. I felt like a lot of the characters were one-dimensional. I felt like um, the fight sequences were uh, superb in a lot of ways, but then I hated that fight montage that's in that's uh, placed in there. Um, felt a little rushed, um, but overall, I mean, since I wasn't really ever bored, I would go. I want to give this movie like a seven out of ten, seven 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 and a half out of ten. Uh, I feel like that's a fair rating simply because. Um, you know, it does have some good moments to it, but unfortunately, uh, the pacing is just, after those 10 or 15 minutes, uh, is so off. I mean, that the movie just never recovers from it, unfortunately. But overall, I did really enjoy it. Uh, I actually would recommend it. Uh, you know, I did a video a few months back, or a few weeks back, I guess, um, you know, after seeing the new uh, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong uh, film, and I kind of compared the two, even though the two don't really, um, have, uh, have, uh, you know, any connections at all, I felt like they were good popcorn movies, both of them, and I guess that's the reason why, in my mind, I compared the two, especially coming out close to around the same time, I will st still say this, I, I feel like the, uh, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong movie was actually, uh, better and in a lot of different ways I was I was more entertained uh, throughout than what I was in the new Mortal Kombat movie unfortunately um, even though I did like I said I was never bored during the Mortal Kombat movie as well but I just felt like you know Godzilla vs. Kong actually was more compelling to me uh, I started feeling uh, for some of the characters more than what uh, I ever did in this. If any of the characters in this movie would have died, I would not have shed a tear for any of them. And that's sad because in the games I actually do. Uh, but unfortunately in the movie I would not have. I didn't feel anything for any of the characters at any point during this movie. But overall guys, I would recommend this movie. Go and see it if you are a Mortal Kombat fan. I don't think you'll be disappointed Especially if you go into this movie with not high, high expectations. Don't think that it's going to be that much better than the 90s version of it. Of course it's going to have better, um, uh, you know, you know, see, uh, you know, you know, graphics. It's going to uh, be more appealing in that way. It's got less cheesy dialogue. Um, it's fun. It's a fun movie to watch. Uh, but like I said, just don't go into it with just overly high expectations. Because unfortunately, if you do that, uh, you will be sorely, sorely disappointed. But as always, guys, thanks for watching this review. And as always... Uh